I'm going to start my final watercolor painting. So in a previous video I had you watch, there were 12 different watercolor techniques that I talked about. In your final painting, I would like you to use at least four of these. And you can work from a lot of different things for this painting. You can work from a photograph like I am. You could work from a famous painting, copying a famous painting. You can work from a still life or a landscape you're looking at outside, whatever you would like. So what I'm doing, what I did here is looking at my photograph, I was thinking, okay, when I repaint this, what techniques am I gonna use so I can keep track and make sure I'm using at least four. So I'm going to be using a wash in the sky. That's this one. I'm going to be using blending to blend this purple into this pink color, blending. I'm going to be using lots of layering when it comes to the dark rock coming through right there. I'm gonna be using watercolor pencil to also make some of these details, watercolor pencil. And then I think I'm gonna use sea salt in some of the light spots here to create a rocky texture. And there's the sea salt. And then I'm gonna go in with my technical pens later for some more detail work towards the end. So the first step about um, for going about this is I'm gonna lightly sketch in pencil on my paper what the main composition of my photograph is. So getting in all the basic shapes and I'm not gonna worry about the detail too much because I'm gonna get to that later with the paint. I just wanna block everything in, map it in. I tape down my paper because as watercolor paper gets wet, it wrinkles, it bows, and it moves a lot. So I taped it down just to keep it stable. So I'm gonna start drawing. Now the next step in my painting, now that I have the basic shapes mapped out and the basic areas of color, I'm going to start with a light background. I'm not going to worry about detail for everything yet. I'm going to get the background color for my sky in. I'm going to get the basic blending colors in on these faces of the mountain where the light is hitting it. And I'm going to do a basic wash of blue in the shadows. So I got the basic background colors in for my photograph that I'm referencing. I got the blending of the different colors on this face of the mountain. I have the wash in the shadows of the mountain and in the sky. Now I'm going to start adding layering of the dark spots of the rock texture showing through the snow. So I'm going to start that next. So here's the end of my layering bit. So I went in with just the blue and black mixed together. I love to use the tray to mix different colors. And I did the detailing on top of that. So I have my layering done, I have my wash done, I have my blending done. And now I'm going to go in with watercolor pencil. So I have dark blues and blacks. And I'm going to go in for the final details in my mountain texture. Okay. 
I forgot to show a trick earlier that my mom taught me. My mom was an art teacher for a while. And if you get a spot of paint that you don't want there, it's time for the thirsty brush technique. So you take a lot of water on your brush and then you twist and suck it up and repeat. So I'm washing my brush, going over it in water again, twist it around and wring out the paint. Just gonna cover it in water one more time. I think we'll do the trick. Twist. And that's it. And now I'm just gonna go in with my wet brush and have it blend in with the background. And you can barely even tell there was a big red spot right there five seconds ago. So it's called the thirsty brush technique because the brush soaks up all that water like it's drinking something. So I thought that was pretty clever. That's what my mom taught me um, when I was learning how to watercolor paint. I added a little bit of red right here just because I thought it would look nice in the sky, even though my photograph doesn't have that. So I just took some artistic liberty with that. And then the best part is peeling the tape away. So again, your requirements for this project are, I want to see at least four of the painting techniques you can definitely do more and watercolor is really unpredictable it's hard to control so don't get too frustrated if things don't go your way because most likely that's how everyone feels when they are working with watercolor it has a mind of its own sometimes but sometimes that works out to your advantage because really cool things can happen when the colors blend together or when you get to layer different colors on top of each other and they have a different appearance. It's a lot of fun. So enjoy, have fun, and experiment. So really rely on your watercolor technique sheet for different approaches and ways to experiment with the paint.